everybody. Welcome to class number 15. That's a big number. And just thinking about that number, reflecting on it, I just want to say that anybody who has made it this far, you've been taking all these classes from one to here, I'm very, very, very impressed with you guys. I just love seeing the comments. I love seeing all that familiar faces, just you know, letting me know that they're taking the classes. And it really does impress me, guys. Your commitment to what you're doing, your commitment to your craft, it's, it's impressive. There are a lot of people who aren't necessarily using their time as wisely and, and optimizing their time as much as you guys are. And I'm very impressed and I thank you so much for being here and taking these classes with me. It really means the world to me. So let's get into our warm up. All right, guys, we're gonna be starting with just some jumping jacks. We're gonna do 30 together. Ready and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Keep it up. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. All right, guys, very good. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're moving into lunges. So a lunge, guys, you're gonna stand with your feet side by side. I'm gonna step forward with one foot and gently tap my knee to the ground before I step myself back. Then I step, tap my knee to the ground, and step myself back. We're gonna do that for 20 total reps. All right, guys, here we go. Ready, go. Step one. So we're gonna do 10 on each leg. Now the other side, two. We're just kind of alternating legs. Three, four, five. Careful that you don't slam your knee on the ground. Six, seven, eight, nine. Doing great. 10, 11, 12. Very gentle and controlled. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Very good. All right, guys. So we're gonna continue working our legs a little bit more. This time we're gonna be doing squats. So when you do a squat, guys, you're keeping both feet flat on the floor, heels on the ground, your hips go back, and you sit, and then you stand up like this. And you wanna keep your feet flat the whole time. Let's do 20. Ready? Go. One, two, get low, three, Leg strong, core strong. Four, five, six, seven. Good, got strong legs, guys. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Full range of motion. 16, 17. Chest up, eyes up. 18, 19, and 20, good work. All right guys, so now we're gonna get down to the ground here and we're gonna be doing some push-ups. okay guys? So I know not all of us are as uh, capable with our push-ups. Some of us might be struggling a little bit with keeping our body straight. That's totally fine. I'm gonna show you a great way to practice these and warm up with these that doesn't necessarily involve you having the perfect push-ups ever, okay? And if you do have perfect push-ups, it's cool because they are still a great workout for you guys too. So look. You're gonna lay completely flat with your feet here and your hands here. Watch what I'm gonna do. When I go from this position, I'm gonna pull my hands here and I'm gonna push my body up. Now, if you're, if you're struggling a little bit with your push-ups, you might end up doing like something more like this, where my body did that wave. That's okay. We wanna get in control so that we, our body can stay straight the whole time. Um, but we're gonna do 10 just like that, okay? So we start here, ready? And one, push up, and then down, and then back to here. Two, push up, and then down, back to here. Three, good, you're doing great. Four, good. Five, every time, straighten those arms out over your head like this. Six, I even relax my feet, so the tops of my feet are on the floor. So I'm engaging my whole body. What were we at, six, here we go. Seven, eight, you're doing good. Nine. One more. Ten. Whew. Nice job, guys. All right, guys, we're gonna finish our warm up with our most important little muscle here, which is our core. We gotta make sure the core is strong. So 30 reach ups with me and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, keep it up, 12, keep those feet steady, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30, good. All right guys, last little bit of core exercise. We're just gonna get those hands under the hips, straight leg lifts for 20. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, almost there guys, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right guys, excellent work. Pop it up and let's get ready to stretch. All right guys, let's get started with our stretch arms back and forth. Good, now forward arm loops. And backward arm loops. Twist your upper body, let those arms swing. Good, and hip circles. Going the other way. Good, all right guys, what I want you to do is I want you to grab one foot, pull your foot really close to you in the back, and I want you to point your knee to the floor and feel that stretch in the front of your leg, your front of your thigh, your quad. And if you can get your foot all the way to your backside and you don't feel the stretch, then maybe just push your hip away in front of you and you'll feel that stretch a little bit deeper. Good, let that foot go and grab the other foot. Bring it up real close, point your knee to the floor. Feel the stretch, push your hip away if you feel it, if you don't feel it. Good, now put your feet on the, on the ground and bring those arms up nice and high and fold forward towards your toes. Good, now I want you to come up. Let's go double shoulder width and hang down again to the center. Good. Now using your hands for balance, bring your hips to one foot and turn your toes into the air like this. One hand on either side of the leg and lean towards it. Good. Now again, using your hands for balance, shift to the other side. One hand on either side of the leg and then lean forward. Good. Now, if you're doing this, you're probably on the ball of your foot here. Um, we're going to shift, and I, I find this a bit more difficult, but we're going to try to go to a flat foot position. So now as I shift, I'm going to keep my feet flat, and I'm going to try to, and you feel like an extra calf stretch as you do this here. So I'll usually leave my hands out in front, because it's a little harder to balance this way, I think. Depends on your ankle flexibility and things like that as well. Now we're going to try to go to this foot, we're going to keep it flat as we can. Here, see my foot's flat now. And I have my hands out in front to kind of pull me forward so I don't fall back. Good, now sit all the way down. And let's put the legs out nice and wide and lean forward. Excellent, good, now come on up. I want you guys to take one arm up like this Bring the other arm across to your leg. And now I'm gonna go all the way over my head towards my foot. Good, come back up and let's go the other way. Other one across, up and over.
Good, and scoot the hips forward just a little bit, and let's go back to the center. Remember guys, we wanna be uncomfortable. Good, let's pull the feet in. Nice and tight, and lean forward. Very good. Now put your feet out a little bit farther in front of you like this. Reach underneath and pull your chest towards your feet like so. Good. All right, guys, let's put one foot out in front, bring the other foot across, and I just want you guys to grab your toes and make circles with your ankles like this. So you're trying to do a big range of motion. A lot of times when I do this in class, people will do it without their hand, but you don't get the same range of motion. So go both ways, both directions, and just really loosen that ankle up. Good, now reach out and grab your toes. Well done. Put your hands behind you now and bring your chest and ankle together. Now let's put the other foot out, other foot across, grab those toes and roll the ankle. Get everything nice and relaxed, full range of motion. Doesn't have to be like fast, but just getting it loosened up. Go both directions with it, kind of go back and forth on your own. Good, now reach out for your toes. Good, now fold that up, all the way ankle to chest. Maybe not all the way, I can't quite get all the way, but you wanna go as close as you can so you're feeling the stretch. All right guys, one more stretch. We're gonna get on our hands and knees here, stair step the feet, press your heels into the ground, getting those calves loose, keep your head right between your shoulders. Good, jump up. Let's get ready to go. All right, guys, so we're gonna get into some back stances and uh, some kicks off of those back stances. So everyone, attention, do me. First, I wanna see a knife hand block. We're gonna chamber like this. As I step forward into my back stance, then I make a knife hand block. Remember, guys, we wanna make sure that L shape is on our feet. Ready? Good, and then back. Ready? Go! Good. Guys, so pause in the back stance, make sure everything is just where you want it. Ready? Go! Weight is on the back leg. Ready? Go! Nice. I'm gonna show you from the side. Same thing. Ready? Go! Good. You're trying to recreate the same shape in my legs with yours. Ready? Go! So I have bends back here, lighter on the front leg. One more. Go! Good. Now we're gonna go with the other side. Ready? Go! Nice. Ready? Go! And we got a chamber high, guys. Make sure your X is up by your ear. Ready, go. Nice. And then back. Go. Good. I'm going to show you from the side. Same thing. Go. Good. And then back. Body is sideways. Go. And back. Go. And back. Let's go two more, guys. Go. Last one. Turn to ready stance each time. Go. Excellent. Okay, guys. So like in our green belt form, now we're going to be sliding into a punch. So watch. I'm going to go back stance, slide forward, hitting the punch. Ready? Go. Nice. Two good stances. A good back stance followed by a good long stance. Ready? Go. You guys are on fire. Keep it up. Go. Nice. I'm going to show you from the side. You guys keep going. Go. Nice. Ready? Go. And back. Go. Nice. Last one, best one. Go. All right, guys, now we're going the other way. Ready? Go. I'm 
not in a rush, guys. I'm trying to make sure each stance has its strong, balanced point. Go! Nice. Go! And back. Go! Very good. Go! Last two. Come on. Ready? Go! And one more. Go! Awesome job, guys. Okay, so we're gonna challenge these back stances and make sure your balance is exactly where it should be by doing some lead leg kicks. So watch what I mean by that. If I do a back stance knife hand lock and I'm balanced the way I should be, then it should be easy for me to just pick up my front leg and do a kick like that. If my balance is not where it should be, it's gonna be kind of hard to pick my front leg up. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna go knife hand lock, front kick, and then you're gonna step back, okay? So we're gonna do those Individually, I'll call each point one out. So first knife hand lock, go freeze. Now, without moving your, with your weight or anything, just pick that leg up and kick. Awesome, come back, do it again. Ready, first knife hand lock, and then kick, good. Now when you did that kick, did you have to like throw your body back in order to pick your leg up? Because that might mean that our back stance balance isn't where it needs to be. So let's do the whole thing. Block, lead leg kick, and then we'll keep calling it out. Ready, go. Nice, and then back. Ready, go. Very good, and back. Go. Solid, guys, very good balance and control. Go. Nice, show you from the side, same thing. Go. Good, and make sure your ball of the foot is striking on that, on that front kick. Ready, go. Nice. Last two, go. Very good. And one more, go. Very good, guys. Okay, let's try the other side now. All right, guys, ready? Go, block, kick. And you wanna do it without shifting your weight too much. Ready, go. Good. Ready, go. Nice. And back. Go. Very good, this repetition is so important, guys, to making sure your body understands the back kick, or back stance. Go! Nice, and back. I'm gonna show you a different angle. Go! Good, I don't want that kick high, face level, you know that. Go! Up, get that knee up, ready? Go! Nice, last two, ready? Go! One more, go, awesome job. Guys, very good work. So back stances, making sure we understand exactly where our balance should be so we can slide forward to punch or have that lead leg kick ready to go. Great job. All right guys, so we're gonna get into some axe kicks today. The axe kick's a pretty fundamental kick. We're gonna make it a little bit more challenging as we go, but I just want you guys working some details on it. So let's step back in a fighting stance. Let's just do a simple outside to in axe kick. Bring our leg up, chopping forward. Ready, and down, nice. Ready, and forward, beautiful. Again, beautiful guys. Think about pushing it up, lean your head back. Ready, good, a couple more. Again, very nice, one more, great job guys, retreat, let's put the left foot back, same thing, nice, and back, good, good, I'm going to give you guys a side view, you keep doing what you're doing, sideways. This is important. I want you guys thinking about extending forward with your axe kicks, which will take you into a sideways position. Last three. Step sideways, reaching out with the hip. And two. Good. One more. Nice job, guys. Okay. So now we're going to be doing an X-step axe kick. Love this kick for sparring, guys. So you're going to put your kicking leg in front. That's my right leg. I'm going to do a quick X-step. Now I'm going to bring my knee across like this. So I'm going knee up like an inside out axe kick. And as I bend my leg, I'm going to extend it and I'm going to do my axe kick over the top. 
Okay? So we go X step, knee up, and around. Let's do it together. Ready? Oh yeah! Very nice. And back. Do it again. Oh yeah! Very good. The cool thing about X step, guys, is if you're limited in your space, you don't have to take up a lot of room doing these. Ready? Oh yeah! Nice. Again, straight from the side. Oh yeah! Very good. Oh yeah! Again. Oh yeah! Nice. Oh yeah! You guys are doing great. Push it up. Head back. Ready? Oh yeah! One more. Oh yeah! Very good. All right, guys. So now we're gonna do the same thing with our left, but you gotta make sure you got the X step down. Shoulders, body, stay still. X step. Knee comes across. We do it up and over. Here we go. Oh yeah! Good. Ready? Oh yeah! Beautiful, guys. Get it up there. Start with the knee, bend, and then extend as you drop it down straight. Oh yeah! Good. Side, same thing. Oh yeah! Nice. Oh yeah! Very good. Oh yeah! Ready? Oh yeah! Very good, guys. Okay. So this kick, of course, you're not allowed to use this kick in sparring when you're not allowed to kick to the head. When you get to higher levels, this X at X kick, guys, is a very valuable tool in sparring. Okay. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a 360 axe kick, okay? So this one, um, I don't want you to take up too much space. You don't need to take up space if you have a simple tight spin, okay? So look, I'm gonna put my right foot in front. Actually, I'm gonna show you from the side. Just watch me first. I put my right foot in front, I do a little step like this, like a step behind side kick, and then I spin. And if I did that right, I shouldn't take up a bunch of space, okay? Do that again. Step, spin, and now I'm just going up and over with my axe kick. Okay, now I'm gonna do it to you. Left foot goes behind, spin up into the axe kick, okay? Now if you wanted this to take up space, it certainly can, but it doesn't have to, and being able to spin in a tight, uh, a tight position, very valuable. So here we go, ready? On my go. Go, step, and axe kick, nice. Ready? Go, step, and axe kick. Awesome, guys, let's do it again. Ready? Go, step, and axe kick. I'll show you from the side so you see I'm not moving a ton. Ready? Go. Step. And axe kick. You'll definitely move a little bit, but not a lot. Go. Step. And axe kick. Keep your head upright and balanced the whole time. Ready? Go. Step. And axe. Awesome. Last two. Ready? Go. Step. Axe kick. One more. And go. Very nice. So let's see if we can do it on our left. All right, guys, right foot back. Small step, pivot, left leg axe kick. You know what to do, let's try it. Ready, oh yeah! Very good, and oh yeah! Solid, guys, keep it up. Oh yeah! Good. Oh yeah! Very nice. Nice, we're shaping the side. Keep working this left, guys. We want both to be balanced. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Nice! Last one! Oh yeah! Very good. Okay, guys, so it's just the same as a 360 round kick, where you step behind and twist, but now you have the option of going up over the top. Nice work, guys. Good axe kicks. Tension and bow. All right, guys, it's time to talk about a word of the month, and the word of the month is composure. Okay, guys, so today we're gonna specifically talk about anger, okay? When we get angry, and I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of things that might make you angry. It could be that you're getting angry at a friend. Maybe they made a joke at your expense that you didn't really like. Um, maybe you're angry at a teacher because you didn't get a good, very good grade or the grade you thought you deserved or something like that. You know, we can get angry for uh, a couple of reasons, guys, and I'm here to remind you that your emotions, even anger, are okay, right, guys? It's okay to feel these emotions. So what is not okay? What is not okay are certain reactions that can harm other people or harm yourself from that anger, okay, guys? So what do I mean by that? Let's talk about the first example, 
where I said if, you know, maybe a friend cracks a joke at your expense, and maybe it was an inappropriate joke, maybe they shouldn't have made that joke, um, and it might have upset you, okay? And that's fine, right guys? But when we let that emotional response get out of control, and what's something we might do if we lost composure? We might say something mean back to them, right? Which doesn't really serve any real purpose, right? Um, we also might even do something as extreme as hitting them or pushing them or getting physical, right guys? Which is definitely unacceptable, especially to you guys as martial artists, because with all that you guys learn, your punches, your kicks, your throws, your chokes, things like that, you know, you could really hurt someone. And that's not okay, guys. That's not why we come here to learn these things. We come here to learn to protect ourselves, okay guys? Um, so, we need to learn to stay composed in those moments, right? We need to learn to kind of grapple and get in control of that emotion. And the secret to that is to recognize it early, okay guys? So when you're starting to get angry, you probably don't just boil over all in one moment, right? It probably gradually happens, right? And as your body and brain start to get a little angry, you'll, you'll kind of feel a certain anger in your body. What does it feel like, right? You're maybe get really tense. You might even start clenching your fists and your muscles. You might even start shaking a little bit. Your face gets tense and you almost feel like hot, like you're, you're, you're just that anger. That's just, you just feel it in your body, right guys? So you wanna recognize it, okay? If that feeling is starting to kind of come over you, you gotta recognize it. And if, if, it, if you're finding it difficult to keep composed, if you're finding it difficult to um, grapple with those emotions, maybe just remove yourself from the situation, okay guys? That, that's often the most composed thing to do, and it takes a really smart person to recognize, hmm, this situation that I'm in right now is making me feel a little out of control. It's making me feel angry. It's making me feel sad. It's making me feel whatever. Maybe I just need to pull myself back from it, okay guys? So recognizing it early that you are feeling this hurt, that you're feeling this anger, that you're feeling whatever, and recognizing what it might cause you to do, okay? Of course, if you think you're in control of it, you can stay where you are and breathe a little bit and grapple with your emotions, grapple with your anger. But if you don't think you can, if you think it's gonna get away from you and you're gonna say something or do something you might regret, something that might hurt someone's feelings or their physical person, then you might need to remove yourself, okay guys? But you wanna recognize it before it gets out of control, okay guys? And of course, we're always doing our best to compose ourselves and stay in control of it. And that's a real sign of maturity when you can just hear people, you can just sit in a room full of people that are just saying all these things that might be designed specifically to upset you and it doesn't bother you at all because you're composed, it's all good, nothing can affect you. All right guys, everyone say composure. Good job, let's all stand up. All right guys, it's time for forms. Attention and bow. Okay guys, we're gonna start with white belt form, your count. Jumi, keep on young. Sure. Ready, stand. Attention and bow. All right, guys, moving on to yellow belt form. Attention. Jumbi. Taiguk Iljang. Attention and bow. Good work, guys. So now we're gonna get into our forms. We're gonna go over green belt. Taiguk Samjang. So with me. Attention, Jumbi. First, look to your left. X, low block. Just like yellow belt form. Now we're gonna do a front kick. Land in a long stance. Kick, pow, pow, punch, punch. We turn to the other side. X, low. Front kick, punch, punch. One, two. Now from here, right hand comes up. We go neck drop, 
to the front. Here, reaching out, palm up. Ready? Again, other side. Step, neck chop. So you notice my foot and hand are opposite. Right foot, left hand. Now we turn to our left. We make an X, knife hand block and a back stance, like this. We slide that left foot forward, and we hit a punch in a long stance. Now we move our back foot over. Single knife hand block. Make your best back stance. Now we slide out in the long stance with a punch. We bring our right hand up to our ear. We're gonna slide the left foot, in block, all the way across the face. Step again, in block. Now, we do a little baby turkey move here. Left foot around, turn, low block. Big high front kick. Long stance, punch, punch. Just like the beginning of the form. Turn, X, low block. Again, front kick. Long stance, punch, punch. Now I'm gonna head to the back. I'm gonna do a low block punch in a walking stance. Low, punch. Step again, low, punch. Front kick, low block punch, and then front kick, low block punch. Left foot moves, but oh, attention, and bow. Nice work, guys. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our blue belt form, Taigu Ojong. All right, guys, Jumbi, follow along with me. I'm gonna start in a long stance. X, low block, like this. Pull that back, drop the arm up, hammer fist to the side. Now we go the other way. X, low block, good. Now I pull that foot back, hammer fist, all the way with my feet together. Now I'm gonna step forward with my left foot and my left hand in block, then the other hand does an in block. Now I'm gonna do a front kick, and I chamber, I do a back fist, and then an in block. Front kick, back fist, and then an in block. Now I step forward in a long stance and I do a back fist. There's a key up there. Now from here, my left foot moves around, single knife hand block, like this. I'm gonna reach back, grab my fist, step in a long stance, Elbow strike, I'm kind of pulling that arm right across to strike with. Now I go the other way. Single knife hand block, here. Grab the fist, step forward, elbow strike. Now I go to the back, I'm gonna turn. Long stance, low block and in block, here, okay? So now watch guys, from this angle, look what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go front kick, X, low block, in block, like that. Now I'm gonna turn to the side, T, high block, like this. My knee comes all the way up and over, and I make a big side kick with an elbow strike. I'm gonna grab at the right, left elbow. T, high block, other side. Big side kick, boom, grab, elbow strike. Now to the back of the room in a long stance, low, in. I want you guys to watch closely. I'm gonna do a front kick. I hop forward, hop, hop, like that. So watch that again. I go kick, hop, one, two, as I do a back fist with a key up. Back to ready stance, but oh, attention and bow. Nice work, everybody. Those are your forms. All right, guys, so for self-defense today, we're gonna jump up a bit, okay? We're gonna go into brown and red belt self-defense, okay? So I know those are advanced, those aren't necessarily in our class, right, guys? But these movements are not too complicated, and I think you guys will be able to pick them up pretty fast, and eventually when you're in that class, you'll need to know them anyway. All right, guys, so here's what we're gonna do. Brown belt self-defense is someone coming up behind you, grabbing you around the neck, and you're gonna base and throw them over, okay? So let's do that first. What I want you guys to do is imagine someone's grabbing your neck like this, and they're behind you. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab their arm. It's around your neck, so you're gonna grab it. Here, as you do that, you're going to spread your feet about shoulder width and base. That's it. So you grab the arm and base. Go. Good. Do that again. Go. Now look, when I do this, notice how I kind of tuck my chin like I'm looking down, and I also keep my back straight with my hips back. Ready, go. Do you see how my, my balance position of my hips back and my head forward? This is gonna give me the position I need to lift my partner and throw them over. Ready, go. Good. Ready, go. Awesome, that's the first part, and that's the easy part. Now, once we're in that position, we need to be able to lift the person. And it's really not that hard as long as you keep your feet flat. So just watch me first. As soon as I base, now I lift my hips like this. I'm just straightening my legs and lifting my hips, but I don't lift my head. Did you guys notice how my head kind of stayed low? If my head comes up, then I'm just gonna push them down to the ground. What I wanna do is I wanna lift them over so they would flip, okay? So let's do that together. We're gonna do base and then lift. I'm gonna call those both out. Ready? Base and lift. Nice, and just kind of popping your hips up, 
and you're letting your head stay low. Ready? Base, lift. And my hands are here just to take some of that pressure off of my neck, off of my throat. All right, guys, ready? Base, lift. Good. Turn from the side. Ready? Base, lift. Good. Ready? Base, lift. Good. And when you get good at this movement, guys, that'll all happen pretty quickly together. It'll just be big slam, and you throw them right over your shoulder. Okay, guys? And this movement, even when we practice it in class, we don't really throw the person over until we're at a very high level because it's a pretty sketchy throw, guys. It can be definitely pretty risky. So now we're gonna move on to red belt self-defense. So this one, someone's grabbing your neck the exact same way, except they're pulling you backwards. And as they pull you backwards, you're gonna step, trip them, and throw them to the floor. So let's do that. What I want you guys to do is imagine now that you're being grabbed the same way, but you weren't able to base forward because they're pulling you back. So you're grabbing here at the same arm position that you just were, but now you're taking your right foot and you're stepping backwards like this. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of hooking their leg. If this person's pulling me, their leg is forward and I wanna hook my leg into theirs. So let's do that, ready? Grab and now step. Good, your right foot kind of goes backwards and you turn to the side. Okay guys, ready? Grab and step. That's good, that's the first part, and that's the most important part. Ready, grab, step, you're hooking, knee to knee. If you were doing this with a real person, with a real partner, your knees would touch the back of your knee to theirs. Let's do it again. Base, and step, good. Let me show you guys from the side, you guys keep doing it. Base, and then right foot goes back, good. Ready, base, and then right foot goes back, because you're being pulled. Now, watch me, watch me first. Once I've done my step back, I'm gonna keep stepping with my other foot here, and now I can just twist and throw them to the floor, okay? So, do that with me. We base, we step back with the right foot. Now you're gonna turn away from the screen, your left foot's gonna go forward, and then you're gonna twist, and you would just trip them. And it works really well, because the harder they're pulling, the more likely they are to just trip with you, okay? Because their own momentum works against them. Let's do it again. Base, step, Step, throw, very good. And again, we're basing, we step, we step, we throw. Nice, let's do it again, ready? Base, right foot, left foot, throw, good. And the person, I'm telling you, if you ever did this for real, the person would just trip right over you. Their own momentum would cause them to trip. You'd almost feel like you didn't do anything. Ready, base, step, step, throw. But it only works if your knees are touching. I'm gonna to show you from the other side or a different angle. You keep going, ready? Base, one, two, throw, good. Last two, base, one, two, throw. Last one, guys, ready? Basing, we step, we step, and then they throw. And you notice you turn all the way around when you're done with that technique. All right, guys, very good job. That is your brown belt and your red belt self-defense. Kind of advanced, but things you'll get to know eventually and what's the difference? Why do we do one versus the other? The brown belt is if when they grab me, I'm able to base and chuck them. But sometimes in the process of doing that, they might whoop, pull you backwards. And if they do, that's when we go into red belt self-defense. Good job. All right, guys, it's time for our weekly challenge. So for this week's challenge, what we're gonna be doing are some poses that involve strength and balance, stability, um, and they're taken from yoga, okay, guys? Now. Before we practice these and before I show them to you, I want you guys to first make sure you have some sort of soft area to practice them, okay? Maybe you have some sort of matted surface at your house, great. If not, if you have like a patch of grass in your yard, front yard, backyard, a local park, something like that, these are not something I want you guys doing on any sort of harder surface, okay? And also, check with your parents, make sure they're okay with you doing this first, okay guys? And just be safe and sensible as you're practicing it, yes? Good, okay, so what we're gonna be doing is first what we call a tripod position. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna get on my toes and I'm gonna put my hands on the ground. Now look how my knees and the insides of my legs are up against my elbows. So they should be touching. You guys see that? Now look, I'm gonna put my, the like crown of my head out in front of me like this. I'm gonna very gently touch the floor like that. And once the crown of my head is very gently touched the floor, I'm gonna pick my feet up and balance on my hands and my head, like this. Do you guys see how I did that? That's all you're doing, right? You're just putting your hands on the floor, gently tapping your head to the ground, 
and then balancing. Now, if you put your hands and your head all in a straight line, that's not a very good tripod, right? You wanna make the triangle position. So with your hands side by side, put your head out in front of you like this. And then if you can pick your feet up, you're good. You're in the tripod position. And you'll probably be able to hold it for quite a while. Okay, guys? So you wanna practice that position and get that one down. And again, notice how my knees are resting. They're resting on my elbows, which are bent. And my elbows hold up my legs. Cool, right? Okay, so now, the next stage, if you can get that tripod position down, is what they call crow, okay guys? So watch, this time you're gonna do just two points of balance. You're only gonna balance on your hands and you're not quite gonna let your head touch. So it's almost the same thing. You start exactly the same way like you're about to do the tripod, but then as your head starts to get forward, gently take your feet off the floor and balance only on your hands. Do you guys see how my feet are off the floor? Watch, I'll show you from the side in case you can't see. Look. I'm only balancing on those hands and my feet are off the floor here, okay? So that's the next stage. So you have to kind of shift your balance so you're right in position. But be careful, right guys? Keep your elbows and hands in a strong position. Don't make any fast movements because you don't want to go too far forward and hit your face on the ground, okay guys? Get a mouthful of grass or something. So be careful with that. But that's what we're doing for our, if we want to learn how to do the next stage. All right, now the third one. You know, in some ways, this one's actually in some ways easier than the last one. It just looks a lot cooler, okay? So be very, very careful when you're doing this and don't make any fast motions. So look what I'm gonna do now. This is called a headstand. I'm gonna go into the tripod. I actually am gonna put my head on the ground. Once I get here, very carefully, I'm gonna let my legs start to go up into the air like this, here. And you guys see how I was balancing on my head and my hands in that tripod position, okay? So I'm just letting the top of my head balance on the ground here. And again, I want that triangle shape on the ground. Be very careful, guys. Make all of your movements very slow and controlled. If you try to move your legs too fast, you can maybe hurt your neck or your head or something like that. So you wanna be very careful, very mindful of how you make these movements, okay? So let's watch one more time. All I'm doing is hands and knees here, like this, as my head starts to go there. Look, I use my ab muscles, my core, to very slowly extend my legs up and with control here. And you wanna make sure you have room in case you kinda like fall forward or roll forward or something like that. You wanna have room to go forward or room to go one way or the other in case you kinda teeter over. But if you do it slowly, you'll have plenty of time to just kind of put your feet right back where they need to go and you can be safe. So again, guys, if you're going to practice this, you're gonna do it A, in a safe, soft area, and B, with your parents' permission and supervision. Okay, guys, that's very important to me. All right, guys, so excellent work. That's the end of our challenge. Let's see if you guys can do it.